body weight training versus weight training, calisthenics versus lifting. Which one is better? Well, I wanted to compare the two uh, very closely. So for an entire week, I decided to train one side of my body using my body weight only and the other side of my body using weights only. Would I discover superior benefits with one over the other, or would I just get crooked? This is my one week journey training one side with weights and the other side with my body weight. But you gotta focus. All right, we're just gonna go straight up this time. Let's pick sides. Heads, right, tails, left. Left is going to be heads, body weight, tails, weights. That is heads. So my left is going to be body weight and that means my right side is going to be weights. Let's get started. How I'm planning to get this started is push, pull, legs. So today is push, that means it's chest day. Let's see what we can rig up, let's get started. Getting started with a quick warm up and then jumping into one arm push ups but on the left side only. After three sets of five getting fatigued, I rigged up a resistance band so I could get more reps doing three more sets of 10. Side note, if you're struggling with doing freestanding one arm push ups, this is actually a great method to use to develop the strength. Give it a try. Feels like so pumped right now. My idea on day one was to alternate between sides on every exercise. So trying to hit chest similarly to the one arm push up, moving to my right side, doing a one arm bench press. Now obviously I could have made this a lot easier if I had heavier dumbbells, but I didn't. So I tried to rig up a apparatus to help the barbell balance. This did not work too well. One thing to note was I immediately felt like this was targeting just the chest more than the one arm push up. For the one arm push up felt like it was targeting a plethora of muscles. Would this just be the case here or with other exercises as well? Moving on trying to target upper chest only with body weight, attempting decline push ups with a resistance band did not work for me, was not strong enough. So I ended up getting one of my parallettes to use with my right arm just as a guide, trying to apply all my tension onto my left side. I was only able to knock out around five to eight reps for three sets. And then trying to rig up a one arm inclined oh, press yes. was a little too difficult with the resistance band barbell setup thing. So I had to resort to my heaviest dumbbell, which is only 30 pounds. Regardless, something synonymous with bodybuilding weight training is that mind muscle connection. And that is what I really tried to focus on for this exercise, squeezing that upper chest with every rep, 15 to 20 reps. Moving on to a tricep isolation, a tricep push down, but only with a single arm. This one worked very well. I felt it pump my tricep up, getting that good mind muscle connection. Then trying to mimic a tricep isolation exercise with body weight only using a gymnastics ring. Probably the hardest part about this exercise was trying to always just only use the tricep to push up. There was this natural reflex to just want to use my lower back to stand up straight, but I had to try to do my best to isolate my tricep and just use that to push me up because that's what we're trying to work out here. Moving on to a chest fly isolation, focusing that mind muscle connection, squeezing the right with every rep. This was very easy because it's a very familiar exercise, but trying to mimic this chest fly with body weight only on one side was a little bit more difficult. So I had to use my trusty parallel again to stabilize me with the other arm as I had a resistance band as well to help guide me as I did the one arm chest fly with body weight on the left side only. This was very difficult, only getting five to eight reps for three sets. Assessing myself in the mirror, I was surprised to see that both sides looked pretty pumped, but my left side, body weight only side, actually did seem more pumped. Was it because I finished with this exercise, or maybe because it was my strong side? Would the body weight exercises actually be superior in building muscle? It was too soon to tell, there was plenty more experiment to go. Rest up, eat up, I'll see you guys tomorrow when we do pull right side weights, left side body weight. Good morning guys, it is day two, so unlike like yesterday, what I'm gonna plan to do today is I'm gonna do my entire left side that's body weight only in the basement gym, and then I'm gonna go to the gym gym where I'm gonna train my right side for weights because they have some better machines that I can use there to train back. Let's get started with the body weight training. Day two pull starting in the basement gym, focusing just on the left side with body weight only exercises, doing a decline pull ups, using the resistance band for some additional assistance so I could get more reps, doing approximately 12 reps, three sets, then trying to do an isolation body weight bicep curl. Not too familiar with this exercise, but after getting into the groove, I really did feel like it was isolating and working the bicep pretty darn good. Body weight only, body weight beast. 
So really feeling the squeeze with these first two exercises, but then moving on to assisted one arm pull-ups. The first rep, I did feel a squeeze, but after that, because I am not strong on this exercise, it was very difficult for me, and I felt like I was giving it everything I could just to get five reps. Only three sets of this exercise, and I felt very fatigued, not only in the arm, back, and lat, but also in the central nervous system. Just overall fatigue. Finishing up with some assisted one arm hangs to work that forearm strength and grip. I was only able to hold these for about 20 seconds. I feel like the bodyweight exercises are fatiguing my central nervous system far more than just the weight isolation movements are. I think that really has to do a lot with like bracing the core, bracing the entire body. Is that a benefit or a downside? I mean, you can look at it either way. Doesn't matter with that being said, we're headed to the gym now. We're gonna train right side only using weights. Headed to the gym for additional equipment for weight training, starting with a single arm lat pull down, just three sets of 12, and then moving on to a single arm seated row, three sets of 12. It seemed like with the weight training, isolating the muscle group was a lot easier and making that mind muscle connection was a lot easier. And I believe that is because with the body weight exercises, it required a lot of focus, core bracing, as well as stabilization from other muscle groups to pull the exercise off. Whereas with weight training, it made it easier just to focus on the targeted muscles. After all of the rowing movements, moving on to isolated bicep curls, once again really focusing on that mind-muscle connection. Finishing up with some forearm curls or wrist curls going both ways to target the forearm and grip strength. Two sets of 25 reps for each side. So it's like the entire pump is transferred from my left side now to my right side. I am actually starting to feel a little lopsided, but you know, that's maybe just because of the different timing. Other than that, not feeling anything like too weird yet. So I'm going to go home, get some good nutrition in, recover up, and uh, just let you guys know if anything changes. Good morning, guys. It is day three. Today we're doing legs. But before we do that, I want to give you guys some updates. Right now, I feel like the larger muscle groups on the body weight side feel more targeted, and the smaller muscle groups on the weights only side feel like they're targeted. But today, right now, it is leg day. We're headed to the gym. We're doing legs, left side body weight, right side weights. This is going to be interesting. All right, see you all in a bit. At the gym, after warming up the left leg, we started with some pistol squats. Attempting to do a 5x5, five five, I was only able to get 4 reps on the 4th and 5th set. Moving on to some single leg glute bridges, focusing on that left side only. Keeping the body controlled, trying to feel the squeeze in the glutes, I did 3 sets of 12 reps. And then 3 sets of 15 reps of Bulgarian split squats, body weight only focusing only on that left side. These really started to burn. And then moving on to some single leg box jumps, working on that explosiveness, three sets of eight reps. Don't forget the most important muscle in the leg, the calves. Bodyweight calf raises, three sets of burnout reps. At this point, I was pretty fatigued, but I only worked my left leg, so moving on to the right leg, using the leg extension machine, doing a drop set of 20 reps, three sets, right leg only, really feeling the burn in the quad. Then on the right leg, doing some single leg hamstring curls. Three more drop sets of 20 reps, really focusing on that mind-muscle connection, trying to feel the squeeze. And then single leg leg press, not going super heavy, but going for reps, focusing on that squeeze. And finally, using the leg press for what it was really made for, calf raises. Finishing with three burnout sets, really trying to focus on the squeeze in the calves. Maybe the right one looks bigger. This one? Oh no, my right oh, side, the one. left one. That's the body weight one. <laughs> Good morning guys, bright and early. My left butt cheek, that's my body weight only side butt cheek or my glutes on my left side, sore, very sore. Now on my right side, the side we're training with weights, my quadricep, is very sore. It's making for this like weird hobble. So yeah, that's where we're at right now. I'm guessing probably the pistol squats. I think I really was squeezing my left side glute. Also those isolated glute bridges I was doing on just the left side with the body weight. And then for the quads, yeah, the leg extension I really think got the right side. So that's where we're at right now. Other than that though, no actual injuries. So that's a good sign. But yeah, just lopsided soreness. Yo, check this out guys. It's a real treat.
Got it at Whole Foods. I'm serious. It was actually a deal. I know. Dude, okay. All right, what's up guys? We're back in the basement today. Legs are still sore, butt cheek on the left side, quadricep on the right side. So today I'm just gonna focus on isolations. There's a few ideas I wanna try out. Body weight only, weights only, let's do it. Starting with a quick warm up and then jumping right into bicep curls. Doing the leaning ring bicep curl for the body weight only side and then using a dumbbell for the weight training side. Doing one exercise right into the other, but then I thought it would be funny to try both of these at once. And to my surprise, it actually kind of worked. Trying to fill the squeeze and just isolate the bicep. Three sets of 8 to 12 reps. Moving on to tricep isolations. Doing both of these at the same time was actually too difficult. That one's not going to work. So I supersetted them separately, starting with our overhead tricep extension. Followed immediately by our bent forward ring skull crusher motion tricep movement here. I feel like it doesn't look like I'm doing this that well. This one was hard to try to concentrate to feel it in the tricep, but with enough focus, I felt like I was getting it decently. This exercise superset, 3 sets, 8 to 12 reps. Moving on to lateral raises, using a dumbbell for the weights only side, and then trying to figure out a way to isolate my left delt using just body weight in a similar motion. I was trying to come up with some kind of like wall slide thing here to use the shoulder to push myself up in a lateral raise movement. It wasn't working. Eh. Nah. So what I did instead was an isometric hold in a one-arm handstand position on the left arm. Is that even working? Yeah, it's working the shoulder. To my surprise, I could really feel it in the shoulder. So supersetting these two exercises, 15 reps lateral raise, and about a 20 second one-arm handstand hold using the wall for assistance. With these exercises starting to get kind of different, just how bad could the imbalances be getting? It almost looks as if I have scoliosis, but I actually don't have scoliosis. It's the combination of having a chronic shoulder girdle injury on the right side there with what I believe is these differences in these exercises giving me kind of like an uneven stimulation, making these imbalances actually look worse with a pump. Hopefully this doesn't permanently make it worse. Regardless, moving to some leg isolations, trying to fill in the gaps, trying to make my right glute as sore as my left glute, but because my right side is my weight side, I'm using a weight doing single leg glute bridges. And then trying to isolate the quadriceps with some weightless leg extensions. It's just not enough resistance. I did not find this time effective, so I moved on to some narrow lunges to really isolate the quads with my body weight only side, doing three burnout sets. After this, I was fried. So that was just isolations, but I'm super fatigued right now. Like, that was a lot of reps. Might have to take another day off, I don't know. I'll touch base with you guys in a second. All right, it is the final day of this experiment. I really do feel lopsided. My entire left side, for some reason, like all in the back, feels really tight from the glutes, the hamstring, to like the rear of my shoulder, very tight. The right side, it's kind of more in the front, quads, bicep, feeling sore, I, I don't know. So looking back on the footage, I've been noticing I've been doing just a lot of reps and trying to squeeze the muscles for the weights, but to change it up on this final day for the weight side specifically, I'm gonna try to go a little more intense, a little more heavy. Let's go hard, let's push, we're gonna take a day off to recover, and then we're gonna look at my physique. <laughs> it's, yeah. Did that just snap? Yeah. Uh. Finishing up the final day of this challenge, doing full body compound exercises, really beginning to feel lopsided as well as just overall fatigued, more so than a normal workout week. For the body weight side, trying to get higher reps this time around, starting with three sets of knee one arm push ups, 12 reps, going into three sets of assisted decline pull ups, 12 to 15 reps. Trying to move on to assisted one arm pull ups, not being very successful only getting about three to five reps per set, a terrible form, and just this overall fatigue that was building up from the week for some reason. And then moving on to three sets of 12 to 15 assisted pistol squats, 
After this, my left side was toast. And as you can see on my left side, especially the arm looks way more pumped than the right. Obviously, moving on to the gym in an attempt to balance this out, this time trying to go more intense with the weights. But I quickly realized with these heavier weights, rather than focusing on the intended muscles, for instance, chest, shoulder, tricep with the dumbbell press, because the weight distribution was lopsided and it felt like it was going to rip me off the side of the bench, this required me to use a ton of core stabilization and strength and kind of took the mind off of the intended working muscle group also look at that neck action there but don't worry thankfully nothing bad happened like last time we did an imbalance challenge now when using a machine or a guided piece of exercise equipment it made it way easier to hit the intended muscle groups without overpowering of secondary muscle group activation while going heavier Keep in mind, this isn't always a bad thing. Unilateral training that requires a lot of core strength can be very beneficial in some circumstances, such as athletic training, etc. It's just something to note that when going heavier with the weights, I really did feel that I wasn't close to 100% focused on the intended muscle groups. Rather, I had to divide my focus as well. Kind of like the bodyweight training when I was going more intensely earlier on with that. Now I know my legs aren't the strongest, but it felt like they were way weaker just using one at a time as opposed to two. Barely using any weight or no weight at all on these final two leg exercises. Now I'm still kind of getting over a minor back injury and I didn't really want to push it severely intensely, but still it felt like this was heavy. As if I were to use both legs, I could do way more than double the weight that I was using with just one leg. Just put it that way. How would my body look after training only one side with weights and one side with body weight for an entire week? Would there be some huge differences? You might be surprised. Let's find that out right now. What's up home slice? So let's take a look at the before and after. Now nothing looks more or less imbalanced than it did to begin with, but everything looks worse. My arms, shoulders, chest all kind of look smaller. And honestly, I feel like my core might look a little bigger, a little wider down there. <laughs> Ah! However, flipping around to the back, I notice it actually looks a little more even. It looks like my right shoulder blade isn't pressing past the center as badly as it was a week ago. Did this challenge potentially help me with that severe imbalance? Now looking at the legs, in my opinion, not much of a difference. I'm sorry, maybe I need to shave my legs, maybe it's poor lighting, or maybe my legs are just too fat. I was expecting one side to be better than the other or something like that, not for them both to kind of be worse. <laughs> Oh, uh, dude, what you what happened, bro? I don't. Uh. Before I get into what I think happened, first off, my opinion on body weight training versus weight training from my experience of this last week. What I realized is a lot of the benefits between calisthenics versus weight training cross over. Strength, muscle activation, the benefits from exercise, but they do have a few things on the outskirts that are different or maybe more different than each other. For instance, I felt like with calisthenics, for most calisthenics exercise, even the ones that were isolations like the ring bicep curls, it really did feel like you had to stabilize the entire body, utilizing more of those secondary muscle groups. Now with weight training, there were a lot of instances, especially when using lighter weights, where it felt like I could dedicate more of my focus to that specific muscle group. So in my opinion, that's a plus to the weight training. When using lighter weights, you can really dial in and focus a lot easier on isolated muscle groups if you want to get that fine tuning. Now that leaves me with a plus on the calisthenic side is the fact that it forces you basically almost with every exercise to have body awareness and to get that full body control. It's like there's almost no way around that. Now specifically with this experiment, something that needs to be addressed isn't calisthenics versus weight training. Something that was really highlighted for me in this experiment was the effect of unilateral training. We're just training on one side of the body at one time. Why am I making such a big deal about this? Well, that is the reason I think I look worse in the afters as opposed to the befores. Now that's not because I believe unilateral training is always bad. In fact, I think unilateral training can be used here and there to work out imbalances, to help strengthen the core, to help you get more coordinated, etc. But this last week, all I did was unilateral training. And in doing that, what I noticed is it felt like I could not go as heavy or as intensely on the bodyweight training exercises 
and the weight training exercises as if I could do a bilateral movement. It's like I noticed you get some extra strength, whether that be because your core is more supported or it's more balanced, when you can do things bilaterally rather than just unilaterally one at a time. I know you guys have made fun of me in the past how weak my legs are, especially in the creatine video. You know, my bench was the same as my squats. I can make excuses all day, but in this video, I felt like we hit an all new low with the display of my leg press on one side of the leg. It's like if I quadrupled the weight on the leg press, I can more easily do it with both legs rather than just doing one leg at a quarter of the weight. Same goes for like one arm pull-ups, even assisted. It's like I can only do five, but I can do 16 unassisted with two hands, which is more than double the assisted one arm pull-ups. I believe I am stronger regardless of the exercise when I could do things bilaterally evenly and that when done for the most part for me stimulates the body in a way that gave me better results than just doing everything unilaterally which is why i believe i shrunk from last week to this week because my entire workout regimen has been just one side at a time this entire week. In my opinion, if I wanted the best results, I would save unilateral training for filling in a gap or something at the end of a training session. That is unless I'm really trying to train for something fancy, you know, like a, some kind of like lift like this, whatever that's called, or maybe like one arm push ups or one arm pull ups, then maybe I'd throw that in in the beginning because those might require a lot of energy if I needed to just do straight up attempts of those. Other than that though, I'm just saying for muscle building purposes, I would try to keep most of my training even. With that being said, if you guys are looking to get in shape with your body weight, check out my body weight training program, Bodyweight Beast 2.0. You can train with your body weight virtually anywhere. We have hard copies and or digital downloads available. And right now, if you use code FOCUS at the checkout, you will get $5 off. Thank you all so much for your positive feedback. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe. More videos coming out. Hope you all have a great day. Peace. I'll see you all in the